So many of you guys have been asking me to get this watch on the channel. Actually, not this watch, this brand. It's a Trasker. And this particular model is the Ventura GMT. Now, although all of you guys have been singing this brand's praise, my question is, is it as good as you guys say? Because after having this watch on the wrist for a week, apart from about two, maybe three little niggles, it really does seem to be batting above its price point. But I'm still gonna share my niggles regardless. So without further ado, let's flip the camera. Let's check out this watch from Trasker, the Ventura GMT. Now straight off the bat, what I like about this watch, it's a Traveler's GMT and it's not taking any inspiration in its design from a diver. And that's a good thing in my book. I've really found the watch extremely functional throughout the week, very practical and it's got a form of elegance about it. It seems to be very well built and at the same time offering practicality, versatility and with that hardness coating on the case and bracelet, I've had no issues regarding getting this watch scratched up and actually using it anywhere. So that's been a big plus. Now, even John from Trasker said to me that you're going to be pleasantly surprised because the watch is very different, and it has been. That said, there are three things about this watch that I question personally, and I'm going to share that with you guys in the gripe section. But overall, it is, it has been a very beautiful watch to wear, very easy on the wrist, easy on the eyes, especially that still blue dial, which is lacquered. I think the color tone is lovely, and the overall appeal as a practical functional tool, it's been great. Now you saw the pop-up, Trasca has sponsored this video, so I will of course leave a link in the description section. If this or any of their other watches interest you, feel free, check them out. Now diving into the specs of the watch, I measure a case diameter of 38.5 with a case height of 12.4. The lug to lug is exactly 46 and a lug width of 20. Now both crowns are 6.4mm, they're signed, they're screwed down, and the watch also offers 150 meters of water resistance. And the total weight on the supplies bracelet sized to my 18 centimeter wrist, I measure exactly 134 grams. Now looking at the overhead for a 38 and a half mil watch, the legibility and that dial size has been very good. Even that height has been great at 12.4 mil, the comfort on the bracelet because it's got a good taper from 20 all the way down to 16 at that clasp. And the fact that the watch offers 1200 vickers of hardness coating, as I mentioned, I've not seen a scratch on this all week because usually after wearing a watch for three or four days, I start to notice little hairline scratches. This thing here has got nothing. It's been great. Now, I really like this bracelet because it seems to be very well made. It's got a beautiful articulation, really nice screws. I've taken the screws out. They're really nice screws. You've got half links on each side of that clasp and an on the fly adjustment clasp. Now looking at the overhead of the watch, you can see there's two crowns, one of the three, one of the 10. And both of those crowns are screwed down, which is great. So the watch offers 150 meters of water resistance. Now I mentioned that the watch is a Traveler's GMT, so by unscrewing the crown, popping it out to the first position, and by turning it backwards and forwards, as you can see that our hand progresses, it also changes the date backwards and forwards. So it's a proper Traveler's GMT, and not dissimilar from our Grand Seiko in its functionality. Next, you've noticed I've turned the watch upside down. I'm right-handed, so I'll unscrew the crown. As you can see, there's clicks. There's little notches or clicks as that rotating bezel goes around. You can lock it to a particular place, push the crown in, screw it down, and that's not accidentally gonna move out of place. Now, if I turn the watch over, you notice there's a solid case back. Very minimalist. And behind that case back is the Miyota 9075 Traveler's GMT. I think Trasca and a lot of other brands have chosen this movement. In my opinion, it is bang on. It's practical, it's thin, it's relatively accurate. I've placed this watch on the time graph and it's roughly gaining about plus seven or plus eight seconds per day. So that's well within spec. Next, if I turn my attention to the loom, it seems to be evenly applied. It's not the strongest of looms, but again, we're not talking about a dive watch here. It's a sports traveler's GMT. And for that purpose, I have zero complaints about that loom. And lastly, before I get onto any gripes or room for improvement, the price. It's 720 USD, and that's brilliant. For the fact that this watch comes in with a hardness coating on that bracelet and case, a really nice enamel dial, the Miyota 9075, and an exceptional wearing experience, I think it's actually a great price point. Now that all said, what are my gripes or room for improvement of this watch? Now a gripe that I found with that rotating bezel, as you move it, there's clicks, I mentioned there's clicks, but the clicks don't seem to line up. So if you 
I don't know if you can hear it. That's actually a click. You see it's slightly off. There, it's popped in. It's slightly off. So the clicks themselves, they don't line up exactly where they should be. Like if that should be 22 up at the top or 24, it's not exact. Now, my suggestion is there's no real necessity to have clicks on this watch. It really doesn't need it because since you've got a screw down crown, you can place it anywhere you want. Let's say there. Once you push it in and screw it down, as you can see, I'm not left handed, but once you can see you screw that down, that's locked in. That's not going anywhere. So it really, the gripe that I have with the observation, Trasco really could have omitted those clicks. They don't seem to be bang on in lining up. The second gripe I do have with this watch is a placement of that crown. It's at 10 o'clock. Some people might find that a little bit annoying. It's very similar to an Omega Seamaster 300 with their helium escape valve. For me, having a screw down crown on this side to adjust that bezel, I've had to turn it around throughout the week, unscrew it, adjust it, and away you go. Now, I've had a couple of Seiko Alpinists in the past with a similar system of a rotating bezel, and the crown has been here, which has been good. So having it on the right-hand side would potentially be nice. But even in saying that, do we really need a rotating bezel on a watch to offer a third time zone? I'm happy with two time zones. That's my personal gripe. I'm actually happy with two time zones on this watch. I think it's fine. Admit that all together. Away you go. It's simple. It's clean. Bob's your uncle. And even on my Grand Seiko, which offers three time zones, I've never used the third. So for those looking for that extra functionality, it's there. But bear in mind, that screw down crown is at the 10 o'clock. If you're ambidextrous, fantastic. If you're not like me, it's a little bit frustrating. And my final gripe is with that clasp. As you notice, it's got an on-the-fly adjustment system. That push lever is a little bit firm. So when I press it, you have to put quite a bit of... The, there you go. You have to put quite a bit of effort to actually get it open. But the ratcheting system on closing is being nice. So in opening it, it's a bit firm, but in closing it, it's nice. So that, that might loosen up. I'm not sure. I've had it for a week. It seems to have gotten a little bit looser, but I think through usage and over time, that might fix itself up. But sharing it nonetheless as a gripe slash observation. And that's been my experience on the wrist with this watch. I want to thank you guys for telling me, get a Trasker, get a Trasker. It's, it's actually been a good experience. The watch itself is very good. Apart from a few small niggles, which I spoke about in this review, it's a pleasant experience to pick up this watch, put it on the wrist and see that it's still not scratched up. I think the watch is priced really well in the market. There's no denying the fact that it is pretty. I think the colorway works really well, especially on this steel blue. And as I mentioned at the beginning, it does have an air of elegance, class, and practicality all rolled into one. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Leave me your thoughts. I do know what the majority of you guys think of Trasker. If you've got one yourself and you've experienced anything different, feel free, let me know. This has been a little gem, and as a brand, just going off this watch, it seems to live up to the praise that many of you guys have been singing. So thanks again for watching. Be well, be safe. Enjoy that watch that's on your wrist. Continue to enjoy this hobby, and we'll see you in the next one.